Hello, friend. I'm John Carter. I've just come back from Russia. It was my 43rd visit to that land. I'm going to tell you today about Putin's Russia and the amazing things I found today happening in Russia because I saw the power of God. Welcome today to the Carter Report and the Russian experience. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter here in Russia. It is a cold day. This is my 43rd visit to the old lands of the Soviet Union. Thank God that evil empire is gone. And I'm here today because God has called me to Russia and to Ukraine to preach the everlasting gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's great to be back. I first came here in the year 1971 and I came as a boy and I came as a tourist just to have a look. I returned 20 years later in the year 1992, 1991, not as a tourist, but as an evangelist. And I came to the great city of Moscow. We conducted the first ever evangelistic campaign by a foreigner in the old Soviet Union. We held the meetings in the Palace of Culture just down the road from the Kremlin. These were days of grace and glory and mighty power. The meeting started at 10 o'clock in the morning and they finished at 10 o'clock at night with only time out for a, a little bit of bread and water. We had a tremendous choir, but better still, we had a tremendous audience. I was talking to an audience basically of atheists, communists, with a few believers. And when I made altar calls for Jesus, the people would break down and weep. They were hearing the gospel of Christ for the, same, for the first time, and they were just filled with amazement. I can never forget those days. And then the next year, it was 1992, I came here to Nizhny Novgorod, or the city which used to be called uh, Gorky after the famous Russian poet. In faith, we hired the great palace of sport. The old communist director said to me, Mr. Carter, uh, this is going to be a failure because no one is going to come. <laughs> he said, we've taught the people here not even to think about him. He doesn't exist in our minds. But when we opened those meetings a few months later, the crowds were so great that that old director was almost killed in the rush of people. It was amazing. Uh, when I came down to the auditorium, I couldn't get in myself. The Russian army had to take me to the meetings. The people broke down the doors. Uh, they smashed the windows. Uh, we had tremendous opposition too. Days of grace and glory and opposition. The great state church sent along ruffians and they had smoke bombs and they had fire bombs and uh, I was preaching with, with smoke bombs all around me and our believers were putting out the fires. We saw the power of God. The place was filled with tens of thousands of atheists and communists and unbelievers. But I want you to know today, listen to this, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. That is why I'm here today to preach that same gospel. And when I preached the gospel back there, we saw hundreds of thousands of people come, come to Christ. I want you to know this. I have seen the latter rain. I have seen the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. I've seen hundreds of thousands of atheists and communists come to Christ. This is my 43rd visit. You say, uh, why do you come? Why do you go there? Is it because you like the climate? 
I come here, my friend, because of the need. These people still have a tremendous need. Please support our work here. Write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358 in Australia. Write to me at Terrigal. In the name of Jesus, please support us in this great work. Amen. Welcome to the Carter Report and the Russian Experience. I'm privileged to have with me today my wife, Beverly. Beverly, I'm glad that you're with me today. How many times, Beverly, have you been to Russia? I've been over 20 times with you. And uh, some of my first impressions, of course, I was impressed at first that God should give us this opportunity to go to the former Soviet Union, just as it as communism was falling back in the 90s and 91. Yeah. One of the greatest blessings of our lives together. When we went to Moscow, do you remember the year? 1991. 1991. And there weren't any cars on the roads. I know no, that no. was one of the things that impressed me. Yeah. No cars except some two or three small cars. I forget the name. Uh, I think there was a car called the... Moscovich. That was it. I think it was partially made out of wood. <laughs> yes, it, they, they were very small. And yeah. this was before the Volgas, before they started yeah. making the Volga, which was a bigger car. Yeah. And also another impression was no food in the shops. And yeah. of course, what had happened, the Soviets had spent all their money making weapons of war. Yes. And so they had gone broke. Yes. And you, people, we mm. saw them lined up to get yeah. bread and cheese. Yeah. And uh, that was something. And also another thing that impressed me, um, Igor, our translator, took us to his home. And in yes. that time, people couldn't <clears throat> choose where to live. No. They, they were told to live in certain small apartments. The apartment, the one that we went to, was no bigger than this room. Yes. And there were three families living there. Using the and, same toilet. Well, that's right. And they couldn't choose who they lived with. No. Certain people were nice, just told it? to go there and they had the kitchen was small. You could only fit about two people in. The bathroom, you could only fit one person in. And then so they took turns cooking their foods and food and then they would go into their bedroom, which was also their eating room. And that's where they took us. And you'll remember that in those days, the doors, they weren't wooden there were curtains separating yes, these rooms, so no privacy. Not a lot of privacy. So, you know, Things have changed. Yes, I know. Now, mm. you've just come back from your 43rd yes. visit there. Mm. So what has changed and what did you? What impressed you about lot, lots, the time? Lots of motor cars, lots of great hotels, a lot of apparent prosperity. But there is still the aching void in the hearts of these people because of atheism and communism and false religious systems. And so that's why, that's why I've gone and that's why you've gone too. Not because we agree necessarily with the Russian government, but we want to reach these people for yeah. Christ. The door opened. Yes. And God mm. led us to go through it. And yes. I'm so thrilled about that and yes. the things that happened there were just miraculous. Now. Then you went down to Nizhny Novgorod. Yes, I did. That was one of our highlights of our work in Russia. Beverly, in 91, we ran the first ever evangelistic campaign by foreigners in the old Soviet Union. You know, hallelujah. And that was Moscow. Yeah, glory, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Just down the road from the Kremlin. And then we booked the Kremlin, but we never got to the Kremlin. <laughs> yeah, well, it, got, it got taken from us. Yes, you can talk to Danny is... Sheldon about this because yeah, he knows the story. He was our partner there. And then the next year we went to Gorky, uh, which is now called Nizhny Novgorod. And there we saw the mighty power of God. I've just come back from Nizhny, Beverly, and I'm almost overwhelmed by how God has blessed this work. In 92. 92. Just tell us again what yeah. happened. Well, since 92, my hair has turned white. Uh, yours seems to be doing well, okay. Well, mine has too, but I get a little <laughs> oh, bit of help. You, you don't want to confess those things on television. But uh, what you see here is what you get. Um, what happened in 92? 92. Oh, 
Dear Lord, we saw the power of God. It was miraculous. We saw the greatest crowds attending evangelistic meetings in the history of the Soviet Union. Uh, thousands, tens of thousands inside, tens of thousands outside, people breaking down the doors, uh, people breaking into the windows. And then the largest baptism in the history of Russia, in the Volga River. Yeah. Uh, the, the, churches the, established. The people were looking for something because I think what had happened, as I look back now, at communism at least structured their lives. Yes, yes. Even though it wasn't <clears throat> good, a yes. good structure. Mm. But once communism fell and they, many of them were atheists, they had no belief mm. in God, they were left with nothing. Mm. Beverly, there was a terrible void there. Uh, let's, let me talk about this void because uh, somebody you talked to me last night, uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, he spoke about the void caused by atheism. Mm -hmm. Somebody said Stalin ripped the heart out of the Russian people. Atheism, what a curse it was. Tens of millions of people murdered in the name of communism and in the, in the name of atheism. And when we went there, there was this tremendous void. People were so hungry for God. Yeah, and, and I was thrilled... Mm. Because as well, I, as you well know, I used to stand behind you the were curtain, there. Yes. behind the curtain, praying right through. And we had mm. other groups praying around yes. the hall too. Mm. But that they'd come in, and their eyes were so full of hopelessness. Yes, they looked so sad. Yes, but then Depressed. you, with the translator, you opened up the Word of God, and you gave them evidence from archaeology to believe the Bible. Yes, yes. And then from then, you could tell them, well. There is a God. Yes. There is the God of the Bible. And that gave them hope. And you could see their faces change. Beverly, we saw Pentecost. People absolutely, say, you know, absolutely. Uh, people say, well, uh, the latter rain is way down in the future. We saw, glory be to God, the latter rain. Yes. We absolutely. saw more than two and a half thousand atheists and communists and members of the KGB Amen. walk out into the freezing waters of the Volga River and get baptized. Yeah. And uh, I've just come back from greeting some of these new believers, now old believers. Yeah, and they're still faithful. The majority of them are uh, still faithful. Uh, went to the Christian Cultural Center, this, the largest Protestant building in, in Russia. It's amazing. Yeah. I spoke there to a, a church that was packed to the doors. I, I saw young people playing violins and... Uh, wonderful singing. They're great musicians. Uh, wonderful, uh, the best. Mm -hmm. Just, just touches my heart. I saw Julia, who's in charge of the three ABN ministry there. This last year, she's lost her brother, murdered. Boris Nemtsov, our friend. Yes, yes, we knew him. My friend, mm -hmm. I knew him. Then she lost her husband. He was drowned, mm -hmm. and when I got over there, her mother had just broken her her hip. And Julie is taking care of her. And so we meet these people who are saints, who are standing firm for God in spite of hardship. Beverly, the church has been through a time of trouble in Nizhny Novgorod. And it's left them stronger for them. There was a man who professed to be a member of our church and he murdered his wife and all of his children. And the government moved in and our churches have been under siege. This was just a few months ago. Yes. Julia sent me a message. She said, don't come. It may be too dangerous. Mm -hmm. But God put his hand over his church. Mm -hmm. Our church has survived. Mm -hmm. The people of God need to realize this is no time to sound the retreat and forsake our suffering Russian brothers and sisters just because we don't like the Putin government. That's right. And not to be feeble and not no, to faint, as the no. Bible says, mm. not to faint in times of trouble. Now, in Nizhny Novgorod, that was where I first started my orphanage work. Yes. Um, I felt impressed at the time, as, you know, the book of uh, James, I think it yes. is, says that true and pure religion yes. is this, to visit mm. the orphans and the, um, the widows, widows and the oppressed in yeah. their affliction. And I just felt impressed that to do something practical for the people because I didn't want them to think, well, okay, you're here just to preach at us. Yes, yes. You're also here to help. Yes. And, that's, and also because we love children. 
So yes. that's where I began the orphanage work. And, and at that time, I also visited a children's hospital and I noticed that they had nothing. If you went into hospital, mm -hmm. you had to take your own bedding you had to go and buy your own medication yes, because the hospitals had yes, nothing. Nothing. Because, as we said before, the fruitage all the, of atheism. All the money had gone into yeah. building weapons of destruction yeah. mm. instead of helping the people. Yes. And so, with us at that time, we had two uh, German friends who were from our church back here in America. They yes. went over with us, and they still had relatives in Germany. And so, what we did, we got some money together, mm. and our friends in Germany. They were able to buy 10 tonnes of medications yes. and medical supplies and they brought it over on a big semi-trailer. Oh, glory be to God. And, and we just thank God. We thank our supporters and for all those people that helped us to do that. And yeah. I know that did make an impression on the people to see, well, these Christians, they're not just here to preach, but they're also here to help us. And we'll be back after this special message. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter in Russia. This is my 43rd visit to this land, and I come not for this weather, but to preach the gospel of Christ. The need here is tremendous. The first big campaign was in the year 1991 in the great city of Moscow, followed by a mighty campaign here in 1992 in Nizhny Novgorod when in the Volga River, 2,530 souls were baptized into Jesus Christ. The need here has not lessened. The people are crying out for God. I'm asking you today, in the name of Jesus, please support us in the preaching of the gospel of Christ to the Russian people. Please write to me. John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California 91358. In Australia, you can write to me at the address now appearing on the screen at Terrigal. I'm here, my friend, to bring Christ to the Russian people. Already we have seen the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. We have seen Hundreds of thousands of people come to Christ in Russia. Please write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358 in Australia. Write to me at Terrigal. In the name of God, please support this work. Welcome back to the Russian Experience. I'm so happy today to have you with me, but I'm super happy to have Beverly with me. Uh, Beverly, welcome today to the Carter Report. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to be here too. Uh, you've been my partner in this great work in Russia for many years. And I've just come back, as you know, my 43rd visit. You've been there more than 20 times. And one of the places I visited is a place that you know all about. Dzinsk. Dzinsk. Yeah, very polluted city. Tell us about that. Yeah, Dzinsk. Polluted, it used to be the uh, pollution capital for the old Soviet empire. It's where they made their hellish chemicals. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Dzinsk, you, you see there the, the disease, the cancer and so forth among the people. As you know, by the grace of God, we built a church in Dzinsk. Uh, God has used the Carter Report to build churches throughout the old Soviet Union. We built a church there. And oh, Beverly, I wish you had been there with me this time to see the faces of the people, to hear the music. The church was founded 25 years ago. It's still standing strong. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, praise the Lord. Yeah, to the glory of God. Yes, that's wonderful because, and talking about pollution, there's so many cities, aren't there, in the former Soviet Union where nuclear dumps were, you know, they were just yes, dumped. Yes. And so many cities, there's so many people sick, as you said, yes. with cancer and other terrible diseases. And I, I want to say to the people watching this telecast, don't think 
what you believe doesn't affect the way you live. Atheism is one of the greatest curses in the history of the world. It almost destroyed the hearts and the souls and the bodies of the Russian people. Beverly, we're going to talk in the next part of our program uh, uh, about Chernobyl. We're going to leave that to, yeah, to the talk on Ukraine. But when I went to Dzinsk, I was so glad to meet with our people. The love almost just swallowed me up. But my heart goes out to them because of the terrible suffering. And there are great needs there. Well, could you tell us about some of their needs? Uh, Beverly, I will try. I'm sure there's so many, but... I think of the young people. Uh, some of the most beautiful young people you'll find anywhere in the world. But they need help. We're thinking, by the grace of God, if we can raise the money, of putting on a, a youth congress in, in Russia and going there and putting on meetings and, and winning uh, young people, not only old people, but we're going to have a, a concentrated effort to reach young people for Christ. Because in Russia, it's been relatively easy to get the babushkas and the old people, but the young people and our own Christian young people, they desperately need help at this time. By the grace of God, we want to go back and work especially for our young people. And we must do that by God's grace. Uh, we've got to raise the money, Beverly. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I'm just an old pastor with his wife. <laughs> They and call uh, me old too, but I guess no, I no, am. no. I'm I'm just an old <laughs> pastor with his young wife, but raising the money is not easy. We don't get any support, of course, from the organisation, but thank God we get support from God. That's right. And God's right. people. Yeah, and usually we've always found that when people hear of the need or see the need, they come to our help, and uh, I'm sure that will happen again. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. In, in the last segment, you spoke about the orphans. Now, in our program on Ukraine that's going to follow this program, we're going to talk about the children of Chernobyl. Do you remember when we went on the Trans-Siberian Express? Yes, I'll never forget it. You know, we went from Moscow to Vladivostok. The Eleven time zones. Eight days on the train mm -hmm. <laughs> and no shower. Mm -hmm. Just a little <laughs> but thing to wash our face in. Do you remember the children in Siberia who came to the train starving? Yes, I remember that Can you well. tell me about that? Well, when we stopped there, like we stopped at every station along the way. At any time of the day or night? Yeah, mm. two o'clock, four o'clock mm. in the morning. These children were there and they were, well, you know, they, they were dirty, grubby little mm. children. God yeah. bless them. And the lady in our carriage told us, the Russian lady, said that every time a train stops, they come because, and number one, it, it, they get the warmth of the train and then people give them bread and give them cheese or any food that they might have left over. And so we, we had some food left and uh, we gave it to them. But that was sad because... Uh, Do you remember how cold it was? It was freezing. It was freezing. I wish it had been freezing. It was... 30 or 40 degrees below freezing. Yeah, yeah. But these children are hungry every day. They come to the train to get warmth and to get some food. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I have discovered that these children who were orphans and deserted children were deserted because of the demon in the bottle. Yes, yes, I do Remember? know that. I do know that. The vodka. Yes. And the parents, uh, because they were atheists, gave up on life and they turned to the demon in the bottle or to vodka and they were drunk all the time and the children were driven out onto the streets where it was minus 30 and minus 40 degrees. Well, that was one of the reasons there were so many orphans because either both parents had died or there was one parent but they were alcoholic and they couldn't look after the children, so they were given to the orphanages. So alcoholism has, has destroyed yeah. millions in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, it's one of the greatest curses in the history of, of the Russian people and in the history of America. 
America today is no longer the great Christian nation she used to be because forces of atheism and secularism are starting to tear the heart out of this great nation. Mm -hmm. And the result, uh, you can see it all around, the, the breakdown of society. But Beverly, you asked me before, what can we do? What can our supporters do? I think we ought to move ahead by the grace of God and try to run this big evangelistic campaign for the young people. Uh, my heart sometimes fails me. I, I, well, I, I think, where are we going to get the money for this? But God has never, never failed us, has he? No, he has not. Uh, we've he run campaigns failed. all around Russia, Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod, Zinz, St. Petersburg, over in Irkutsk and Siberia, Kazan. Do you remember Kazan? Yeah, well, I didn't get to Kazan because I had a um, health problem. But tell us about that because that was an interesting it was a, place. That was a Muslim city. Yes. But you came right. with me later on to Kazan. Yes, we You did. You came with later. me to Kazan. Yes, to, it was a Muslim city. And we saw hundreds of Muslims baptized in the river in front of the mosque. People say it can't be done. Now, you just to go back a moment when you said, you know, we're getting older, of mm. course we are, why not have a, a perhaps a training school? Yes. For the young people a school because so many of evangelism. Of them, so many of them are eager. Yes. And this to is to teach and you and, know to uh, know the Bible better and how to present it to others. No, no, this is a great idea. Uh, years ago we ran a school of evangelism for the Russian pastors. We had yeah, every Russian every one of our pastors come into a central place at the Christian Cultural Center established by three ABN. And we had a great school of evangelism. And it was very successful. Super successful. We need a school of evangelism mm -hmm. for our young people. Absolutely. Don't you believe this? Oh, with all my heart. I love the young people. Yes. I, I spent a lot of time with the young people, teaching them how to communicate with God, how to pray, because most they didn't know about prayer and how to you know, commune with God. And so I love the young people and we, we need, I just feel impressed like you to, to do something for them. Not to do less, but to do more. Yes. My friend, won't you be our partner? Won't you be Beverly's partner? Won't you be my partner? We've been telling you about the Russian experience. We, uh, we've been telling you about what atheism can do to a nation, how it can destroy the nation. And in many ways, even though Russia has had a period of peace and prosperity and freedom, that time is passing. The freedoms are going. It is time now to work for the Russian people. Please write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. In Australia, write to me at the address on the screen. Till next time, God bless you.